some amazing statements by modern scientists. They, see, they have seen some things that cause them to wonder. And I'll read you a couple things. Fred Hoyle, one of the most recognized astrophysicists in the world, he said this, A common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as chemistry and biology. Now he's speaking about a complex and seemingly impossible equilibrium of nuclear, nuclear reactions that take place in red giants, these big stars out there. And as he, he's studying it, he's saying, this, this just doesn't make sense how it could all work. And he says, it seems that somebody's monkeyed with physics as well as chemistry and biology, and that there's no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. The numbers one calculates from the facts seem to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. Although Fred Hoyle was an atheist, he said some of the things he had studied could not possibly have happened by chance. On the same topic about the uh, red giants, astrophysicist George Greenstein, another one wrote, there are three quite separate structures in this story, helium, beryllium, and carbon, and two quite separate resonances. It is hard to see why these nuclei should work together so smoothly. Other nuclear reactions do not proceed by such a remarkable chain of lucky breaks. And he said, this particular one is so remarkable because they work, these nuclei work so smoothly. Other nuclear reactions do not proceed by such a remarkable chain of lucky breaks. It is like discovering deep and complex resonances between a car, a bicycle, and a truck. Why should such disparate structures mesh together so perfectly? Upon this, our existence and that of every life form in the universe depends. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Thou openest thine hand and satisfies the di desire of every living thing. Psalms 33, 6 and 145, 16. As we survey all the evidence, the thought insistently arises that some supernatural agency, or rather, capital A agency, must be involved. Is it possible? that suddenly, without intending to, we have stumbled upon scientific proof of the existence of a supreme being? Was it God who stepped in and so providentially crafted the cosmos for our benefit? You know, as they study and learn more, they realize these things just cannot happen by chance. You may recognize this gentleman, Albert Einstein, theoretical physicist, he says, the scientist is possessed by the sense of universal causation. His re religious feeling takes the form of rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law, which reveals the intelligence of such superiority that, compared with it, systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. In other words, he's saying, all the thinking of everybody on the earth put together doesn't even compare with a thinking that had to go in place to somehow make harmony between natural law. And he, he doesn't have the answer for it. Another atheist was forced to admit this, Stephen Hawking. He says, the laws of science as we know them at the present can contain many fundamental numbers, like the size of the electron charge of the electron and the ratio of the masses of the proton to the electron. The remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development for life. Hmm. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalms 19, 1 to 3. The more I examine the universe and the details of its architecture, the more evidence I find that the universe, in some sense, must have known we were coming. <laughs> Freeman Dyson, theoretical physicist. The exquisite order displayed by our scientific understanding of the physical world calls for the divine. Vera Kistiatowski, physicist, Professor Emirati, MIT. This is the last one we'll have here. Now we see how the astronomical evidence supports the biblical view of the origin of the world. 
The essential elements in the astronomical and biblical accounts of Genesis are the same. Consider the enormousness of the problem. Science has proved that the universe exploded into being at a certain moment. It asks, what can produce this effect? Who or what put the matter or energy into the universe? And science cannot answer these questions. For the scientist who has lived his dream by faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. <laughs> you know, I should mention that this uh, gentleman uh, died not too long ago. His name is Robert Jastrow. He is the founding director, or was the founding director and head of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. The founder and director. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Psalm 119, 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 